So I'm going to demonstrate now how to set up a simulation using the digital mixing tank. Uh, I'll just start off with something simple, and then we'll kind of graduate to more advanced features uh, as the movies progress. But uh, just to summarize here, the DMT lives within, uh, within Rhino. Uh, Rhino is a general purpose three-dimensional modeling and visualization software package. The DMT is a plugin that sits inside Rhino and takes advantage of Rhino's built-in um, visualization uh, and meshing functionality. So Rhino uh, is very powerful. It does more than, than what the DMT does, but uh, it also does what the DMT needs quite well, which is why we built a plugin for it. So uh, when we have our DMT tab open, the first uh, uh, pane we see within the model view is the simulation tab. And the simulation tab is where we specify general simulation parameters. This is where we specify the viscosity of the fluid, given in meter squared per second, a kinematic viscosity. And we specify a specific gravity. And here you'll note that I'm preparing to simulate a system of water. It's here that we specify the resolution of the system. So this particular simulation will have a 100 uh, lattice points per impeller diameter. I can make that whatever I want it to be. Uh, it's here we specify the total simulation runtime. So as set up, this simulation uh, will run for you know, 10 seconds. The impeller will spin for 10 seconds. And we'll, I'll get to in a minute where we specify uh, impeller velocities and such. Uh, it's here where I specify the frequency of data output. Uh, so this data output interval is how frequently we're going to be outputting key simulation statistics. Think power number, pumping number, forces, side forces, torques, etc. Um, it's how frequently we're going to be sampling, again, those those mechanical properties. Um, let me skip steady state for just a second. I'll get back to it, but let me speak to these other two first. Uh, VTK slice interval. This is the frequency with which we will print three slices of the flow field. These slices exist in the XYZ planes uh, mounted, or rather centered about the impeller mount point. Uh, so these are pretty cheap when it comes to memory, so you can print these out at a pretty decent frequency without too much concern about exhausting your memory. Um, uh, but again, they're not the full output, they're not, they're not the full three-dimensional output, they're just slices uh, that extend through the flow field, but are very useful for diagnosing and presenting what's going on in the system. The VTK volume inter interval is the frequency with which we're printing out the entire fluid volume. And these files can get big. I mean, many of our simulations have, you know, hundreds of millions of lattice points. And so the entire volume contains all of those points. And at each of those points, a litany of thermophysical properties and uh, and mechanical properties, you know, velocity, EDR, vorticity, etc. So these files can be huge. They can be uh, many gigabytes, uh, and they can fill your hard drive. So be judicious with how frequently you print them out. They make very compelling images, very compel compelling static images of how things like vorticity, EDR, velocity, and such are evolving through your system. But be careful about making too many of those, because again, they can, they can fill things up pretty quick. If you want to make movies, uh, do it using slices. That's what we recommend. Uh, down here, particle properties. In this simple simulation I'm setting up today, I'm not going to put any particles in there. Um, but if I wanted to simulate particles, this is where I'd specify their diameter and their specific gravity. So you can see right now I've tuned it up to basically model fine sand, you know, 0.1 millimeters in diameter and a specific gravity of 2.7-ish, maybe 2.5 is better. I don't know, I'd look something up in the literature. But either way, that's where I'd specify uh, the properties of the particles, if I had particles in the system. So with that uh, that simulation pane all specified and ready to go, let's import some geometry and build this build the system. Uh, first step, I import my impeller. Okay, I have one conveniently located here. Uh, now you'll note that this is an IGIS file. Uh, the DMT internally generates and uses STL files, okay? Uh, but we prefer to generate those ourselves because when we generate STL files, uh, we're very careful to make them spatially uniform for use in our fluid structure intera interaction algorithm. Um, uh, if people feed us IGES files and SOLIDWORKS files, this is good. We can suck those in and convert them to nice, again, homogeneous STL meshes. Uh, if people feed the DMT STL files, it can get a bit confused because, again, oftentimes they're not sufficiently uniform and it can give spurious results. And so, again, we, we, we prefer IGES files or SOLIDWORKS files, parts or assemblies, whatever, uh, when importing geometry into the DMT. So, again, this Russian is an IGES, so I load it in. Uh, it filled the area nicely. If it hadn't, I can always right-click on this Zoom Extends All Viewports, and that would just rescale the viewpoints to match 
um, the size of the windows in case the geometry is much bigger or the impeller geometry is much smaller than the current viewpoint. Uh, so when this geometry gets loaded in, we need to tell the DMT um, how this thing is spinning. We need to inform uh, the DMT uh, where the axis of rotation should exist in the system. And so for this Rushton system, we're just going to do a, 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 a vertical impeller. And so this axis of rotation is going to go from 0, 0, 0. Note the W there when I defined the origin of this axis of rotation. I'm going from 0, 0, 0. And the axis of rotation goes to 0, 1, 0. So again, all I'm defining here is the y-axis. And it was convenient that I defined my impeller when I made it in SolidWorks such that the axis of rotation was aligned with the y-axis. I did that by design. I think, it, I, think, I think it works well. But at the end of the day, we can put anything we want into the DMT, and it'll figure it out. But uh, it just makes it easier if things are already aligned when they were made in, say, SolidWorks to match you know, common uh, mixing geometry assumptions, which is gravity is aligned with y, and the axis of rotation for a vertical impeller is aligned with y as well. So again, the endpoint is 0, 1, 0. And the W here matters. Uh, that implies that we're choosing a point within the world view. So I'll put enter there. And uh, it's done. It's set the mixer axis. So it's ready to go. Uh, we've told the DMT how this thing is going to rotate. Um, and note that you can click if you want to. Click here to define the axis. Click there to define the endpoint. That's fine. I prefer pointing things into the command line. Uh, but but uh, not everyone likes that. So you can click if you want to just as well. So, okay, now we need to specify uh, the RPM, how frequently uh, this impeller is going to turn, how many turns per minute. Uh, I'll make it 60. Um, so this is, let's see here. If I look down here, I can see the coordinates of my cursor. So this guy is about 0.1 meters, negative 0.1 meters. This is a 20 centimeter impeller. Uh, it's going to be f uh, spinning at about 60 RPM in water. Uh, so that's what we're building right now. Uh, all right, so I've specified the axis of rotation, the, the mixer axis. I've specified its uh, rotation rate. Let me go ahead and move it to its mount point and then build a tank. So I'm going to say this thing sits, uh, let's say it sits uh, a one diameter above the bottom of the tank. So I'm going to move this. I select it all by uh, hitting Control A. I'm going to hit Move. Again, that's a built-in Rhino command. And I'm going to move it from the origin. Again, W, 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to move it to, again, I could just click if I wanted to. You can just use the uh, GUI. Um, but again, I like to move it uh, using the command prompt. So I'm going to move it to a position, what did I say, 40 centimeters above the origin. So I say W0. I'm not going to move it anywhere in the X. I'm going to move it 40 centimeters up in Y. And I'm not going to move it anywhere off center in Z. So this will be centered in the tank about 40 centimeters up off what will become the bottom of the tank. Okay, it's moved. It's moved out of the view frame. So here I'm going to go back to my zoom extends all viewpoints, right-click my mouse, and uh, and there it is. It's back again. But now it's uh, 40 centimeters up. So I have my impeller. I have, uh, uh, I'm going to find my tank now, and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. So let me, uh, I'm going to create a canonical tank. So you can import a tank. That's fine, but just for simplicity, I'm going to create a canonical tank. That is, I'll use the DMT to build a very simple tank and get this thing running. And so uh, I'm just going to say this tank has a diameter. Let's say it has a diameter of 0.4 meters. Uh, let's say it has a height of, uh, let's say it's kind of long and skinny, 0 0.8 meters. Okay. Uh, we'll assume it's flat bottom. You can give it a you can give it a conical bottom. And this is where you specify the, the uh, angle of that cone. I'll just make it a flat bottom with 0. And I'll say this, uh, the baffles are, let's say, let's say they're one centimeter thick. Okay. And, uh, there we've built our tank. So I'm going to right click here to extend all, to all windows. I'm sorry, extend to fill all windows. And there's the tank we built. Uh, and again, this is just using that canonical tank feature, which I, uh, canonical tank, which I just showed, selected on a moment ago. Um, in a, in a next video, I'll show how to import your own tank. It's just as easy. In fact, it's easier because you've already constructed it in, say, SolidWorks. You're just loading it in here. Uh, but recognize you don't have to import a tank. You can just build one automatically within the DMT if you want to get bright, if you want to get up and running in, uh, uh, very quickly. So here we have our impeller. Uh, we have an RPM specified. Here we have a tank. Uh, it's already built uh, per the geometry that we built. We specified the simulation parameters. We're done. We're ready to run uh, the CFD simulation. 
So I right click and I choose how I'm going to uh, export and save this. I can either export and just save the files for future use. I can run the DMT solver right here on my local machine or I can send to the cloud and run remotely. Um, so again, you realize at this point we're finished in a very general sense and we can run the simulation and it'll print key statistics, things like power number, flow number. It'll make nice movies. It's, it's ready to go. Uh, and that's all it takes to get started with a very basic simulation uh, within the DMT. So no meshing, uh, uh, no fussing around with any sort of uh, uh, um, tests or rather uh, uh, a meshing test. It's ready to roll. And uh, again, next simulate, next movie will illustrate some more advanced features that is adding particles, adding probes, etc. But if you want a simple vertical impeller, you're done.